Lee and Pat, we're really enjoying our study with you folks. It's uh, so refreshing to study with, with folks who are interested in knowing what the Bible teaches and willing to change to please Jesus. I look forward to our study each week. It is a highlight of the week for me. What questions came up this week uh, that you would like to discuss? Lee and I went back over all the scriptures that we studied last week. That answered my questions. I don't have any questions, but I've been doing a lot of thinking. Let's talk to our Heavenly Father and get right into the study. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this time that we can come together to study Thy Word. We're so grateful for uh, Lee and, and Pat and their willingness to study Thy Word. And we ask that as we do so, we would do it with open hearts and minds. Uh, be with us as we study Thy Word. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Lee and Pat, please complete the section on your religious background. Uh, search your mind and answer each question according to your understanding. Remember, there are no right or wrong answers in this section. It's just your personal religious background. Have you ever been baptized? Yes, I was baptized when I was a baby. Me too. If yes, what year? Let me see. About 26 years ago. I was baptized in 1991. What does that next question mean? I was baptized with water, Holy Spirit. Was the element that was used water or the Holy Spirit? I don't know. I was a baby. But when the priest baptized my nephew, he sprinkled water on his head. I'm sure I was baptized the same way. That's fine, Pat. Just answer to the best of your understanding. If you were baptized with water, which method was used? As a baby, so I don't remember. Whatever Lutherans do. Um, so I guess sprinkling? Just circle the answer that applies to you uh, at the letter E. Write down what you understand to be the purpose or the reason that you were baptized. Hmm, I don't know. That's fine, Lee. Just write down, I don't know. Well, I was baptized for original sin. Very good. Write that, write that down, Pat. Uh, we have some more questions under the letter F that have to do with your thoughts and feelings. Lee, how would you answer that next question? Do you feel that you have been saved? No, I don't feel like that. What do you mean saved? That's an excellent question, Pat. If you were to die tonight, do you feel you would go to heaven and live with Jesus? I think so. I will circle yes. If yes, what year? About 26 years ago when I was a baby. Lee. You can skip G, H, and I. Pat, how would you answer H? Briefly, how were you saved? By God's grace. Pat, how were you saved by God's grace? By faith, I guess. Tell me, Pat, how were you saved by faith? Hmm. Well, it must have been when I was baptized and my uncle John and Aunt Mary were my godparents. They had faith. Write that down. Which would you circle under I? I circled after. Lee, how would you answer J? I guess I joined the Lutheran church. I went with my parents when I was a small boy, so I circled yes. I circled yes. I've always been a member of the Catholic church. Pat? How would you answer K? I thought a lot about our study last week. I will have to circle unsure. I will have circled unsure also. How can I be sure that I didn't even know what the gospel was until last week? Excellent point, Lee. Uh, what is your understanding of the gospel now? That's easy. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's exactly right. Pat, how would you answer the letter L? At this moment, how do you feel about your relationship with Jesus? I circled good. Lee, how would you answer that? Well, I'd say it's a toss-up between bad and unsure. So I circled unsure. Lee and Pat, I really appreciate your honesty. At the end of this lesson, you can compare your answers to the, to the Bible answers. Uh, that way, you will know for sure, without any <coughs> doubt, 
what your present relationship is with God. What do you think about that? Personally, I want to know. Very good, Lee. What about you, Pat? I feel sort of scared, but I want to know and do God's will. That's an excellent attitude to have, Pat. Kim, what thoughts would you like to share? I struggle trying to comprehend the seriousness and the consequences of sin to be separated from Jesus for an eternity. That would be terrible. That just blows my mind. I had never given much thought to the seriousness of sin before this lesson. You know, sin really is terrible. Would you like to share your thoughts on sin, Lee? Well, I guess it's hard for me to grasp the suffering Jesus went through because of my sin. These are all excellent thoughts. God loves us a lot more than we can fully appreciate. However, we can grow in our understanding and appreciation of God's love for us as sinners. Lee, would you read the first scripture and question in number five, please? Sure, let me find that. Ah, here it is. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Does everyone sin and fall short of the glory of God? Yes, they do. That's right, Lee. Pat, would you read the next scripture and statement, please? Okay, where's First John? Remember, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and the large book of John at the beginning of the New Testament. Then, before you get to the book of Revelation, you have four small books that all begin with the letter J. They are the first, second, and third John and the book of Jude. I remember that now. There are four books in the New Testament by the name of John. I found it. 1 John 1.10 If we say that we have sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. People who claim they have never sinned are liars. That's true. Pat, that's right. Lee and Pat, how would you answer the last question under number five? I'd answer it yes. You wouldn't be honest if you denied it. You're right, Lee. Pat, what do you think? I agree. Lee and Pat, since Jesus died upon the cross for our sins, let's take a few minutes and write down our personal sins upon the cross. You write some of your sins, and Kim and I will write down our own sins. Mm, I can't think of any. Pat, have you ever lied or taken something that didn't belong to you? Well, yes, I have. Write those down. I don't think there'll be enough room for all my sins. Well, I used up all the room. I still have room left, but then I wrote small. Lee, how do you think Jesus feels about your sins? I'm sure it doesn't make him feel very good. I didn't realize that I have done so many sins until I started writing them down. Thanks, Lee. Pat, what are your thoughts about that? I think it's terrible that Jesus had to die on the cross for my sins. Lee, how do you feel about your personal sins? Not very good. How, how about you, Pat? Just terrible. Thank you for sharing. Lee, would you please read 2 Corinthians 5, 21 and answer the first statement? Yeah, I can handle that. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be righteous of God in him. God the Father made Jesus to become sin on our behalf. That's true. That's right. Pat, do you understand that? Oh, Pat, let me rephrase the question. How would you summarize that verse? Jesus did not sin, and the Father made Jesus become sin on our behalf. But that doesn't seem fair, does it? Excellent question, Pat. Was God showing His grace and mercy or justice when Jesus died on the cross for our sins? Well, God was showing His grace and mercy. That's right. What other thoughts do you have? 
I was confused about that, but now it makes sense. <clears throat> Great. Great, Pat. Would you please read 2 Corinthians 7, 8 through 10? Okay. For even if I made you sorry for my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. For I perceive that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. Now I rejoice that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led you to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be in regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. All right, thank you, Pat. Let's think about what these verses are saying. What two kinds of sorrow do you find in verse 8? Uh, one kind is sorrow according to the will of God. Oh, the other is the sorrow of the world. That's right. Lee, what does the sorrow of the world produce? Death. That's exactly right. Pat, what does sorrow according to God's will produce? Repentance. Very good. Think about this. Is repentance the same as godly sorrow? I would say yes. Pat, why do you say yes? Oh, uh, the answer is no. That's right. How did you reach that conclusion, Pat? Because this scripture says godly sorrow leads to repentance. So you have to change both your mind and your actions. You're right, Pat. Lee, which do you have to change first, your actions or your mind? You would need to change your actions, or your, sorry, you would need to change your mind first and then your actions. That's true. Pat, when you become sorry that your sins hurt God, is that godly sorrow or repentance? That would be godly sorrow because repentance is changing your ways. Very good. Lee, to follow Jesus, will you have to repent of or give up anything that is good? Um, no, you'd only need to repent of your sin, which is bad for you. Excellent. Lee. How will you feel about your sins if you have a deep appreciation for the pain, agony, and suffering, and the death of Jesus on the cross? Really bad. Pat, what are your thoughts? I had never given much thought to sin. It makes me sad that Jesus had to die for me. Lee and Pat, let's review verse 10 of this text. Godly sorrow brings about repentance which leads to salvation. That's right. Salvation from what, Pat? Mm, I don't know. That's fine, Pat. Go back to number one and read the second scripture, John 8, 21. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away and you will seek me and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. Thank you, Pat. What can keep you from having salvation or being with Jesus? Sin. That's right. What is salvation? Salvation is having your sin forgiven. That's exactly right. Lee, what questions do you have? Uh, no questions from me. That's pretty plain to me. Okay. Pat, would you read Acts 2, 38? Sure. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Pat. Lee, are repentance and baptism commands or opinions? Sure look like commands to me. You're right. Lee, according to these commands, does baptism come before repentance? No. You need to repent before you're baptized. Very good. Pat, why are you baptized according to this command? To have your sins forgiven. That's right. Lee, are you forgiven when you <clears throat> repent of your sins? No. Um, repentance leads to your salvation. Excellent. Lee and Pat, how does this affect your personal situation? As a baby, I couldn't have repented before I was baptized. Looks like being baptized as a baby didn't help me either. Thank you. Lee and Pat, let's suppose for a moment that you decide to obey the gospel of Jesus to be saved. What would you need to do? 
I would need to repent because I've already been baptized. Pat, that's interesting. Uh, were the, these people commanded to be baptized and then repent of their sins? No, they were told to repent before baptism. That's right. Pat, what difference do you see between what the Bible teaches and what you did? Well, I was baptized first, but does that one little thing make it wrong? Good question, Pat. Let's hold that question until we get to number 11. Lee, what are your thoughts on this subject? I don't see how a baby could do anything these people were commanded to do. Excellent point. Pat, let's look at the last question in italics. When should you make the decision to obey the gospel? Uh, I don't know. This is a big decision. You're right, Pat. Uh, it's the greatest decision that you'll ever make in, in this life because it determines where you'll spend e in eternity. Lee, Pat, uh, let me set the date for you to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. With your permission, let me suggest the date of January 1st in the year 2100. Man, I'll be dead and gone for many years when that date rolls around. That's right, Lee. And that would be foolish. You know, we have, a, we have the baptistry and the clothing ready at the church building. You mean right now? Excellent question, Pat. Let's review numbers 9 and 10. When did these people obey the gospel? It looks like they all obeyed Jesus immediately. Pat, look at Acts chapter 16. Looks like they were baptized about midnight. Lou, are you saying that we can be baptized tonight? Sure. I would just have to make a phone call and someone will uh, have everything ready. Uh, now, Lee, Pat, this is a big decision. And if you're not sure about making this kind of commitment, you may want to put it off until next week. I would like to give it more thought. Well, I've made my decision. I'm going to obey Jesus tonight. What if I die tonight? Where will I spend eternity? That's fine. Pat, take all the time you need. Why don't you uh, plan to come along and witness Lee's baptism into Christ? Let's firm up the date for our next study, and then I'll make a phone call. Next two lessons, we'll be studying about how to identify the Lord's church. I will make the phone call while you are firming up the time and the date of the next appointment. Pat, may I use your phone? 